Hello, welcome to another Google Earth Engine tutorial. In this video, I'm going to introduce the uh, Earth Engine data uh, dataset explorer that you can use to uh, find out what kind of dataset you may want to use uh, for your project. So let me show you how to get uh, access to the notebook. Uh, you can go to the GMAP uh, website and then on the left side here, click notebooks, scroll down to find number 151. So this is a notebook that I just uh, edited yesterday and it's called Dataset Explorer. It, the source code is adapted from the notebook uh, located here and it was developed by uh, Rene Johnston from uh, Google. And so the original notebook uh, is very detailed. So if you want to learn more about how this was um, set it up, you can take a look at the source code. It's actually quite complicated and very comprehensive. And I have integrated into GMAP. So now you can just use a couple lines of code to use the dataset explorer. So let me show you how to do that. You can just right click and then open this one in Google Collab. Then uh, it's going to take you to Google Collab. So you do need to have a Google Earth Engine account. And also you need to get a Gemini API key. So all the details in here, all you need is just click and you will take you to the website. So you have never used that. Uh, Google Gemini basically is just a last language model that allows you to uh, ask questions and uh, you can get answers. So what we're going to utilize is to use that to actually query the data, uh, Earth Engine data catalog, and then give you the sample data set, give you the sample call, and also make uh, recommendations. I will show you uh, shortly. And so the first step is that once you get the API key and also the Google Cloud projects, then you can set that as collab secret. So basically on the left side here, you can add a collab secret. So you're going to add your Google uh, uh, project ID. So basically your uh, Earth Engine project ID and also your Google API key. So just set it up in here and then just turn this one on just like what I'm showing here. So for example, the Google project ID and also the API key from um, Gemini. Once it is set it up, then you can just uh, um, install the packages. And since Google Collab uh, has GMAP pre-installed, but it's an uh, older version. So I just released the new version yesterday. So you may need to uninstall it. Then you can click this one uh, to install the GMAP and also all the AI packages. And uh, once it's installed, you may need to uh, restart the kernel. So if you see the warning message at the bottom here, red color is just uh, restart the section. So one time, restart section, and that's it. So once you are done with the installation, then we can start using the GMAP uh, AI module. So within the AI module, there's a dataset explorer class. So we just import this dataset uh, explorer. And once it's imported, then we can create a data explorer object. So we're going to assign it to uh, the data explorer. So under the hood, it's going to retrieve the um, the Earth Engine uh, state catalog. So get all the data set, and then it's also going to load the uh, embedding. So basically utilizing Gemini and then to loop through all the data set. So it knows like what's available. Then when you ask questions, you will be able to give you uh, answers. So basically it's just a last language model. So this one may take a couple seconds. As you can see here, we found like 117 files and uh, because some of the data set are being duplicated. So the data set is actually coming from, uh, so if you go to uh, the Gemini, for example, uh, firstengine.google.com. If you want to learn more, uh, basically it's under here, the data set. So this is a huge data catalog and there are tons of tons of data sets. And for if a beginner or so you are just trying to start on a new project, you may not know what to use and some of the data set might be suitable for your project, uh, some maybe not. So it's kind of very um, challenging to go through all the data set. So how about if we can ask um, language model to actually give us the recommendation and then you can explore the uh, data set. So once we create the data set explorer, then just call this uh, explorer text show. And by default, it's going to show you this one, but uh, basically you can type any questions You can type your query here, then just press enter. So for here, for example, I can ask the question, uh, how have uh, global service, uh, length service temperature changed over time? And then just hit enter. So it's going to query, use uh, Gemini and also the dataset explorer to uh, find out the dataset. So as you can see, just after a couple seconds, then you will have this dataset explorer uh, loading up. And the nice thing about this is all the source code, basically you can select from the list here. Right now we set the limit of seven, but uh, we can actually change it uh, if you want. And it's going to load up and you will show you all the data set available. So you can select, for example, you can click through a different data set that's being recommended. And then you will load up the source code. And also on the right here, it will give you some source. So basically, 
uh, Gemini is going to tell you, for example, if this is a great fit for studying temperature or not, and what kind of things inside, um, and what 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 the, what's the data set about the spatial resolution. Also, we give you the sample code. So this is exactly what a kind of really much, the, the 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 source code example is from, for example, from the Earth Engine Data Catalog, a sample examples. But you don't have to navigate away from the page. You can run basically everything in the same notebook. You can turn layer on and off, for example. Uh, you can navigate. You can take a look at um, different areas, and you can zoom. Uh, you can certainly change the opacity. For example here. And if you want, you can also explore it. So I can click this one. I can change, for example, the color map if I want to. So uh, there, this is all basically from the map. So I can, for example, change to maybe cool warm. Right? And then just hit apply. Then it works, right? This is very nice because you don't, basically you have access to a data set. You can play with that. And then um, you can see if this is something suitable or not. Once you, uh, once you have decided, then you can just copy this so far into your notebook and then you will be able to start uh, using that for example they say okay this is the the one that i want you can just control c so you can create a new code block now below here and uh, you do need to uh, import gmap and also if map but this is going to show you here this is the sample code what we need to do is just import ee and import gmap okay and then you can create a new map for example map equal to map dot map and we're going to create the map. Then after that, we can out all the data sets. Let me click this one. It should load the data set. Oh, and you also need to display the map. By default, it's display. Here. Take a look. So now we have this data set. So it's very easy to use. Uh, basically, you can explore different data set. And so you can select other uh, data set if you want to. So just uh, navigate through. Choose the data set and look at the recommendations. It might take a couple seconds. But for example, this is highly suitable. So this is book one uh, for studying global surface temperature so if you want to ask any other question you can just remove it and then you can type whatever query you want for example let me try the second question how have global surface water changed the past decades and just hit enter so it's going to query all the data set related to uh, surface water and then it's going to give you the recommendation so if you uh, are familiar with the data set you know some of the common one for example how have the global surface water changed the past decade Right, so basically we need time series data. The first one here showing up is this one is not suitable because it only represents um, just one time period and it's too coarse. So it's not enough for uh, starting the surface water change past decade. And you can check out the other one, for example, the global surface water, the ZRC global surface water. And I definitely know this one is suitable because uh, it has data since the 1980s. And we have data every year, every month. So this would be a book one for starting a uh, global service water and take a look so again this is great fit for starting it provides global coverage and also data of set from 1980 2021 and you had different data set and also some of the basic information here yeah. again you're welcome to try out this data set and copy then you can paste into here then you'll be able to uh, access this data set again things uh, should be out of the box so this is really nice that you can use to explore all kinds of data sets. Uh, you can ask other questions. For example, I can say, how have global forest changed during the past decade? So you can also specify different area, um, different time span. You will be able to actually figure out. So uh, give it a try. Uh, I have only like tried a couple of these queries, but there are a lot of potential. So you can basically ask any questions. If you're working on certain research projects. You want to find out like what kind of data set available? What kind of data set you can use and this will be a nice tool that can help you to for example this is the uh, forest non-forest map uh, from uh, JAXA uh, using the uh, EROS uh, data set and I know there's another one for example the global forest canopy height data set so for example JRC also is cover for example you can try out this one global uh, forest land cover change multi-year 30 meter resolution NASA yeah, this one is way suited for starting global forest change the past decade is the 10 data set of five five years. Suddenly you can change the color bar. It is color bar available from here. Change it maybe green for you. I want it to be very similar. Take for example. 
the data set. This one, fine. I have access to call. Uh, you have access to the data set. You can change the customization. You can change the visualization. And once you are satisfied, then you can actually copy the sum call and then integrate it in data work. Okay, so that's all I want to uh, show you. Uh, try it out and uh, let me know what you think. Leave the comments down below. I'm happy to um, prove it if you find any bugs. Okay, so that's all. I will see you in the next video.